where it's just gone a quarter to eight with more sad news this week. Florian Schneider from Craftwork has died at the age of 73 and as a a co-founder of Craftwork, one of the most influential bands in history. Andy McCluskey from OMD is with me now and I, I know, Andy, that you're still feeling very emotional, aren't you? I'm sad, yes. Uh, yesterday was a sad day for me. I felt very melancholy that one of my heroes, somebody who changed my world very dramatically, has passed away. Can you even describe how important craft work were to you as a teenager? I saw them for the first time at the Liverpool Empire on September the 11th, 1975. I was in seat Q36. Uh, it was the first day of the rest of my life. And they, they said it was OK for a 16-year-old from the wrong side of the river in Liverpool to write songs about aeroplanes and oil refineries and the historical characters and that everything and anything could be music. And that's, they opened up doors for myself and loads of other people. What do you remember about that first time seeing them? They were the antithesis of every Anglo-American rock cliche, and they went on to become even more so. Um, it was the height of long hair and flared denims and lead guitar solos, you know, guitarists with their phallic cymbals welded to themselves, and these guys came out in suits and ties. They'd their drummers stood up and played electronic drum kits, not drum machine, not not rhythm boxes or drums and they had screens behind them with projectors on even in those days the whole thing was radically different can you go back in time and get into that headspace of yours that night and and what was it that that you felt I just felt inspired and liberated, uh, and I, I know I wasn't alone. I mean, if you see all of the uh, the posts from various musicians in the last 24 hours, they just opened up doors. They, they, they brought conceptual music into the popular arena, and... I mean, admittedly, I look like Tom Baker's Doctor Who with an afro <laughs> and a trench coat and a, and a long scarf. But they changed my life, not stylistically immediately, but definitely music. And, and Paul Humphreys and I started writing music then and there at the age of 16. I had an upside down left handed bass guitar and he had nothing. He cannibalized the circuit boards out of his auntie's radios just to make weird noises. And Kraftwerk said it was OK. Do you think OMD would have even existed without them? No, absolutely not. I was going to go and do an art degree and Paul was going to become a telecommunications engineer and we would never have even dreamed of starting a band if it wasn't for them. Did you ever get to to know Florian? Does anyone ever get to know Kraftwerk very well? They've created this myth around them and they've kept themselves to themselves. I met Florian a couple of times. Um, He actually seemed to be quite uh it had a, had a sense of humor I, I know that particularly on the computer world tour back in 1981 when the, the whole band would come down the front and with their handheld instruments and hold them out to the audience to play he was always the one that sort of couldn't resist cracking a smile and sort of fractured the robot veneer um but um you don't get to meet Kraftwerk very very often <laughs> uh, i wonder if it's a case of uh, best not meet, meeting your heroes Sometimes, sometimes. I mean, I do recall that also back in 1981, they did come to see us play when we toured Germany, and they came to see us in a club uh, in Bochum, and I was the most terrified I'd ever been in my life. And finally, we met them afterwards, and all I could conjure out of my mouth to to speak to my heroes was, what kind of speakers do you use in your studio? <laughs> so I regretted that immediately, but they were, they were charming and they were lovely and supportive and kind. Do you think that, that they know how important they were to you? I think that they know how important they were to the whole world. I mean, Kraftwerk these days uh, do a lot of touring. It's only Ralph now uh, still in the band uh, from the originals, but they are essentially curating their legacy now. There won't be new music, um, but they they know how important they are. That's why they're positioning themselves in the pantheon of influence of popular music. Do you think it's fair to say then, as I've said already, that I think that, that they are, were, are one of the most influential bands in history? I would agree with you, and I'd go further. I'd say that they have been the most influential band on modern music in the last 50 years. They 
changed everything and they predicted the changes. I mean, it's 40 years since Computer World album almost, and everything is computer now. Nobody really knew that was going to happen, and all music is now made on computers. Even sweaty rock bands pretend not to have computers, but they do, and all pop music is made on computers. The, the only acoustic instrument on a pop record now is the vocal, and that's recorded on a computer, edited and pitched on a computer. It is the computer world, and they predicted it. I've got radioactivity here to play, Andy. I think it seems most fitting if you introduce this and, and tell me what's so amazing about this particular piece of work. Well, this is the song that really transformed my life, and I think people know that OMD's first single, Electricity, was really just a fast punk version of radioactivity. Um, this is Kraftwerk coming in with a Geiger counter and Morse code and telling you how the future is going to be. Radioactivity on BBC Radio 6 Music playing that as a, a tribute to, to Florian. Florian Schneider, who's died at the age of, of 73. And my enormous thanks to Andy McCluskey from OMD for a great chat and wonderful tribute to Florian.